You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free with the Sheriff's Daughter Program. My name is Julianne Harris and I have been arrested by God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And I've been set free from fear and pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life, I've been set free from. And a special shout out to my dad in Northeastern Montana who is a sheriff there. So yes, I am a sheriff's daughter. Today is May the, the 16th <laughs> in the year of our Lord, 2021. And I am so super happy that you're tuned in today because I have more truth to share with you that has the potential to radically change your life, folks. Um, it, it has the potential. And when I say that, I mean, it isn't a surefire way. It is a surefire way if you choose to take it, receive it, believe it, and implement it. You know, I, um, I had been talking about, um, you know, we apply ourselves to the word. And that means reading the word, um, you know, meditating on the word. This is how life change comes is applying ourselves to the word. But sometimes, and most of the time, we don't apply the word to ourselves. And what happens when you do that is you get a whole bunch of knowledge stuck up here in our brain, but it doesn't actually change our life. And I feel like that's where a lot of born again believers are. They may know a lot of these truths that I'm sharing. Maybe you don't, but unless you apply it to yourself, it's not going to do any good, right? So that this is my heart's desire for you is that you take these things that I share with you and you apply it to yourself. And listen, I have to do the same thing, you guys. This is how my life was so radically changed, but it's not just, it was changed a while ago. No, this stuff is practically changing my life as I speak. <laughs> it's practically changing my life yesterday and the day before. You guys, this is important stuff. And unless you stop and you think about it and you choose to believe it, it's going to do you no good. So that's just a fair warning. Because <laughs> I listen, I am all about if you're going to listen to somebody, if you're going to watch my videos that I put together, um, I want it to affect your life and change your life. And some of you guys are like, well, I've tried that and it doesn't work. No, I, I would beg to differ because, you know, we can try something, but when we when you just try something, it's kind of like up in the air whether or not it is going to work. But when you just choose that this is what I'm doing, this is what it's going to bring in my life, this is the change that I'm believing God for in my life, then you do that by faith. And you guys, we got to get into the game here. We got to be at war with our the thoughts that come to our mind. Listen, the enemy can only deceive you. His only place of battle and attack is our mind. And so this is what I'm trying to help you do is try to help you understand uh, the Ephesians 1 prayer and how God revealed it to me. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I would encourage you to go check it out uh, because it's profound and it's amazing and it changed my life. And this is how I know that it can change yours is because it changed mine. You guys, we put so much pressure on how we have to be, how perfect we have to be, how we need to just straighten up how we're living and do all this stuff in order to be right with God. And God is always all throughout the word saying, no, you are right with me. And then that changes how you behave. That changes your reality. It's how you see that changes everything around you. It's not the other way. You can't change everything around you. You might try really hard and do your best to do it, but if you're still thinking wrong, this stuff is gonna come crumbling down. But it's once we start believing right, then our world around us changes and it's effortless change. And so this is what I'm trying to encourage you with. <clears throat> so Ephesians 1 prayer, excuse me. Ephesians 1 prayer is basically Paul praying for the church um, that they would know three different things, okay? The hope of their calling. I went over this 
about, I don't know, I started four, four or five messages ago. Um, the hope of his calling is relationship with you. Nothing more, nothing less. His hope for calling you is that you just pick up the phone and you say, here I am, Lord, speak. You, um, it's all about relationship. That's his whole calling for you. Okay, so that's the number one thing Paul was talking about. The second thing Paul was praying that your eyes would be enlightened, that you would know these things, the hope of his calling and the riches of his inheritance in the saints, the riches of the glory, <clears throat> excuse me, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Did you know there's riches of glory in you? Because remember last week I talked about how you are God's inheritance. The riches of his glory, of the glory of his inheritance. The riches of the glory of his inheritance. You are his inheritance. I'm his inheritance. Every born again believer is God Almighty's inheritance. And there's riches of glory within us. That's how God sees us. There's riches of goodness. What is God's glory? It's his goodness. And listen, it's simply because of his goodness that we can be his inheritance. Do you see? It's We are so rich with goodness, with God's goodness. And, and we can see it if we look for it. But a lot of us, we get our eyes so focused on the bad and the negative and the why and, and the who and the what and, and the how and all this junk that's going on around us in this world and we are so fixated on that we are not seeing the goodness of God that is on us that is in us listen the fact that you can be born again by the spirit of God that is God's goodness that is his glory you are a house of glory of the glory of God of the goodness of God God is a good God and when he looks at you, he sees you as perfect because you've believed on Jesus. It's a gift. It's a gift of righteousness. Your right standing with God is all a gift. And when he looks at you, he sees his inheritance. You are God's inheritance. And that was the second thing that Paul talked about. And I just want to touch on this scripture that I finished with last week. Um, and just say it again because I didn't have a whole lot of time to just really uh, massage it in to you. Um, and this is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, when we look at that scripture, <clears throat> Jesus is the author and the finisher. You know, we as humans are all about doing. What do I need to do to be right with God? What do I need to do to be saved? You can, you can see this example in the Gospels of the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus, to Jesus, <laughs> the Son of God, and says, What must I do to be saved? And... And Jesus met him where he was at, but he could see the flaw in there. There's nothing you can do to be saved. It's simply by believing on Jesus and having faith that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to earth and died on the cross for your sins and my sins, and then he was raised again on the third day. You guys, we have a live and well, amazing God. God the Father, and then Jesus seated at his right hand. And we are in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is in us. This is profound stuff. But Jesus is the author and the finisher. Jesus started it, and he's ending it. What are you going through in your life right now? Because guess what? Jesus has started the faith that's already in you. If you have even a glimpse of faith, the word says even a, a mustard seed size of faith. Mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds ever. If you only have that much, did you know Jesus placed it there? And then he's going to finish it. And, and how can that reap any benefit in our lives is by us believing on Jesus. Be like, Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but I believe in you. And I believe in you in me. 
I believe I have the mind of Christ in this situation. I believe I have peace that passes understanding. I'm going to let all of the anxiousness and the worry and the concern go. I'm going to cast my cares upon him because he cares for me. You guys, I'm just quoting scripture. I'm just putting it in my own words. This is how the Christian, the victorious Christian life is walked. You guys, listen, how many times have you worried all night? You've stayed up all night worrying about something. How many times has that done any good? I'm here to tell you it hasn't, and you know it hasn't. All it's done is just cause you stress and harm and lack of sleep, and now you feel ill, and it just goes on and on and on. Meanwhile, you were never meant to worry and stress. That's why Jesus said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. It's so good. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And then it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. That joy that was set before him, the joy that he could look at at the end was you and me. You guys, this is an amazing relationship aspect. Jesus knew that by him dying, you and I were going to be God's inheritance. And we were going to be brothers and sisters, joint heirs with Jesus. And that's how Jesus could go to the cross and die the worst death anybody has ever or will ever die. Despising the shame, going through all of that for you. And here's another thing that is just mind boggling, but it will change your life if you choose to believe it, that if it had only been you on this earth, Jesus would have done it just for you. Some of you guys shudder, be like, no, no way. Yes way, because that's how much God values you. That's how much Jesus knows you. You know, I think religion has just made this, um, you know, God is like way out here and he has no idea what I'm going through. He's like a, a far away God. And I'm here to tell you that he's not. He lives on the inside of you. He's right next to you. He surrounds you. He takes you by his by your right hand and he helps you. That's our God. So we have the hope of his calling, which is to relationship. And see, you guys, you can only understand this and truly believe it if you enter into a relationship. God wants to show you how much you mean to him. But a lot of us, we don't have time. We think maybe it's silly. Um, it's our flesh wants to do all this other stuff. But if you were to seek God with all your heart, sit down and just ask God to show you how much he loves you. He wants to, <laughs> and he's doing it on a regular basis, but most of us don't see it because we're too busy. We're too scatterbrained. We're, you know, any, anyways, um, <clears throat> the hope of his calling is relationship. Number two, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You are God's inheritance. Praise God. And then the third thing Paul was praying in this Ephesians 1 prayer was the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's get into this because this is profound as well. Uh, when God revealed this to me, he had already spoken to me out of Luke. And so let's just go over there to Luke uh, chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, God had already ministered this to me um, in various ways. And it has to do with identity. It has to do with power and authority that we've been given. But when I was about to go on to my um, missions trip to India, my second year of Bible school, uh, I had a lot of people that were like, well, are you going to get vaccinated? Oh, you really need to be careful of the food that you eat. And, and listen, while well-meaning, it was like that never even entered my mind. But once it did enter my mind, then I was like, okay, God, I need a word so that I can have full assurance, which I knew like, okay, the safest place for me is where God wants me to be. So that's where I'm going is to India. And, um, and then God spoke this to me. So let's just talk about this. <laughs> um, and so in Luke chapter 10, 
Let's just start in verse 17. I can't ever start anything later than verse 17 because I feel like I'm not doing it justice. So uh, Jesus had sent the 70 out two by two to go minister, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to uh, basically do what Jesus was doing. Okay, And so in verse 17, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then in verse 18, I think I've spoke on this before, but Jesus replied to them and says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, which is profound. Um, it, it basically shows you how Jesus had a secure identity. Jesus didn't have memories of being the third member of the Godhead before he became man. You understand that, right? Jesus, as a man, had to believe he was the Son of God by faith as a man um, now he didn't have a sin nature so I think there was a whole lot less holding him back but he had to believe by faith through the Old Testament scriptures through all these different avenues that he was the Son of God uh, he could have looked at his birth and been like I was born you know and laid in a manger and you know it just doesn't even make sense how could it be the Son of God but he saw who he was in the scriptures and by faith he said this is who I am and so it's to such a point where he says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. This is, he knows who he is. He ha knows his identity. This is who you and I are. And this is the place we need to get to, to go, you know what? It doesn't matter what's coming at me. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven because Jesus is on the inside of me. I am a part, I am a co-heir with Jesus. We got to see our identity as victorious, not victims. Praise God. If we get into this idea that we are a victim, you can stay in that victim mentality and it'll take you nowhere. But you can stand and say, I am victorious because of who lives on the inside of me. It may not look like I'm victorious right now. It may look like that I'm the victim, but you know what? I'm not because I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Have you beheld that? Have you even used your imagination? Because the devil's a loser and he will always be a loser and he knows he's a loser. And when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus in you. We need to rise up and stand in the authority and the victory that Jesus has given us already because Jesus is on the inside of us. Our spirit is Jesus and us and we're doing this thing. Praise God. Okay, let's, let's keep moving on. I'm not even getting to the scriptures that I want to focus on. <laughs> and so in verse nine, 19, so Jesus has just said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He's like, devil's a loser. <clears throat> in 19, it says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So before I was going to India, this is what God spoke to me. And I was like, yeah, he's given me power over everything and nothing shall by any means hurt me. He's not wringing his hands or worried that I was going to India. I'm here to tell somebody today that's watching, God is not sitting up in heaven wringing his hands because you took him by surprise. Because this person doing this to you took him by surprise. That you, the situation you might find yourself in, he's like, oh man, I didn't see this coming. No. God knows the end from the beginning, you guys. And there is comfort. There is rest. That is how we can cast our care and go, okay, God, you knew this was going to happen. So I'm casting my care on you and I'm listening to heed your voice in my next step in this. And, and you walk free from fear and anxiety and discontentment and all this negative junk. So I just want to set the stage here. Jesus is saying, I've given you power over all the enemy to trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise God. That's awesome, right? <clears throat> now here's where I want to focus in verse 20. He says, notwithstanding, in other words, nevertheless, like that aside, the fact that <laughs> you have power over all the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But let's put that aside. He says, in this rejoice not. Don't rejoice in that. He says that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
You guys, you have an eternal destination. And that is in the presence of God Almighty. In, you are the inheritance that is coming to him. Your names are written in heaven. You see, up until this point, that was not possible. This is the greatest miracle that ever was and ever will be. And this is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. You guys, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you. That is the greatest power that ever was or ever will be. Praise God. Do you see yourself as that? Do you walk around acknowledging every good thing in you in Christ Jesus? Because this is what Jesus was saying. He was like, don't celebrate that nothing shall by any means hurt you. He's like, but celebrate this, that your names are written in heaven. And this is what Paul is wanting to tell you. He wants you to get a revelation and that the eyes of your understanding can be enlightened to know what the hope of his calling, the exceeding greatness, or the 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 riches of his inheritance in the saints meaning you're his inheritance and number three the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe man that's good you guys that exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe you guys i've always heard this ministered as the power that god has placed on the inside of us and that while that is so true just the fact that you are born again is the greatest display of power that ever was or ever will be. And we don't see it as that. Because when we get born again, we only see, we don't even see anything. We're just like, okay, I believed, I confessed, now what? (laughs) But do you realize that in the spiritual realm, that is the most profound, amazing miracle that ever happened? That's the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe is the fact that our names can be written in heaven. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's like, don't don't rejoice that you can trample over serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He's like, but rather rejoice in this, that your names are written in heaven. Let's look at let's look at this Ephesians 1 prayer in the light of that. Because it's gonna, I believe you're gonna have an aha moment. <laughs> and so in Ephesians chapter 1, let's start in 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. We believe in what? In the working of his mighty power. And in verse 20, it says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named hallelujah not only in this world but also in that which is to come and in verse 22 and hath put all things under his feet under whose feet under jesus's feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church you and i are the church we are the body of christ in verse 23 which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all You guys, this is how we can walk in supernatural victory, supernatural joy, supernatural prosperity, supernatural whatever we choose to walk in. We can do it because we are a member of the body of Christ. We have believed on Jesus and God wrought this amazing, amazing, abundant power in Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and and we are the fullness of who jesus is but we don't know this you guys for some reason we're like a whole bunch of babies sucking our thumb going well god doesn't love me because i did this did you know that's just a baby you don't know who your heavenly father is and that's why at the whole beginning of this prayer paul was like I just pray that um, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. We have so many Christians walking around who have no idea who their God is, who their Heavenly Father is, who Jesus is. They have no idea the exceeding greatness of God's power that is towards us who believe. Because we believe on Jesus, 
We, our names are written in heaven. And that's what Jesus was saying in Luke. He was like, don't rejoice in all this benefit. That's just a benefit that nothing shall by any means hurt you. And this is how we should believe it. This is how we should behave is we can just walk through life in joy and peace and comfort. Let's take a look at an example of this. This is somebody who knows exactly how to walk in this. Um, Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. This is... (laughs) The story of Paul. Man, Paul went through some junk. I'm telling you, if you start feeling sorry for yourself that maybe you're going through something, you need to just start looking at Paul's life (laughs) because not that we're supposed to compare ourselves amongst ourselves or measure ourselves by ourselves, but (laughs) nobody on this planet has gone through the stuff that Paul went through. So in this story, in this part of the story that I'm picking up in, is they've already (laughs) went through this terrible shipwreck. And Paul was like the beacon of hope in this. Uh, uh, Maybe I'll take some time to just go through the story and just look at, at how even the heathen people on the boat were heeding to Paul's voice. And Paul was like, I told you (laughs) this wasn't a good idea. And then he's like, but don't worry. You know, God told me nobody's going to die. And they're all like, okay. And so he instructs them and they do everything he tells them to do. So they miraculously all survive through this shipwreck. And now they're on this island. Okay. And so as if this whole lead up hasn't been enough. This is what happens in chapter three or in chapter 28, verse three of Acts. And it says, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, so now they're on this island. Okay. And he had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. There came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. This is a snake, a viper, a deadly snake fastens on his hand. (laughs) I know I just read it, but I feel like I really need to like paint the picture. You guys, come on. He's just picking up sticks and all of a sudden the snake comes out of nowhere. And verse four, and it says, and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thou he, um, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Do you know people? This is so like people. People will be like, oh, they were miraculously saved there. But look, look at what else bad is happening to this guy. This guy definitely must be a murderer. He must be a bad guy for all this stuff to be happening to him. Isn't that how people are? Is that how you are? Because I would say, knock it off. (laughs) You don't know why some things happen to people. Maybe it is their own choice. Maybe it isn't. Anyways, I love how these people were like, oh yeah, sure, he escaped the sea, but he must be a murderer because this serpent latched onto his hand. And in verse 5, here's how Paul responded. He wasn't like, oh my God, somebody suck out the venom. (laughs) Who is there? Someone, anyone. Or he wasn't like trying to suck the venom out of himself. And I don't even know if that's a good idea. That's just something you see on movies. We should probably investigate whether or not that's a good idea. Uh, But... (laughs) He didn't, it didn't even phase him. In verse five, it says, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. You see how Jesus was saying, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have power over all the enemy to trample on serpents and scorpions. Oh man, you guys, we have to have this become reality in our lives. Otherwise we are a roller coaster Christian in these days, because guess what? (laughs) I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but there's some crazy stuff going on and it's targeted at Christians. And are you walking through life going, nothing shall by any means harm me? Like, are you walking through life believing that if a snake were to just latch onto your hand, you'd just shake it off and feel no harm? Now listen, the rest of the story, basically all the people see this, they see that Paul didn't die and they all get born again. They all come to Jesus. They all come, they're like, Whoa, that's amazing. Do you see how this is to be our victorious Christian life? We are to draw people in to go, wow, that's amazing. You're going through that with no harm. You're going through that totally at peace. Um, This is not a usual thing. And I'm here to encourage you that if you don't look any different when you go through stuff, 
than your unbelieving friends, then who are you drawing to you? You know, if nobody's, <laughs> I love this. I heard somebody say, if nobody's following you, like if you're leading and nobody's following, then you're just taking a walk. <laughs> and a lot of us as Christians for decades have just been taking a walk because nobody wants to, to be like you. Nobody wants to, there's nothing in your life to say it's supernatural. There's nothing in your life to say um, like, wow, there's something different about you. Like what, what is it? You see all these people on the island, they saw Paul get bit and he shook it off into the fire and felt no harm. And they were like, whoa, that's amazing. Uh, your God is the only God. We want to know your God. What's going on in your life? That are you drawing people in or are you pushing them away? They're like, oh God, she's a drama queen. Or, oh my goodness, I really don't want to have anything to do with whatever that is. I just want to encourage you today, you guys. This is the power, the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe is that born again experience. And from that, we are oozing power. But, but we have to believe it for it to change our life. So... I'm going to go ahead and have to end it right there, right here again. So uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this with somebody. If it blessed you, it might bless somebody else. Uh, hit subscribe. And then if you hit the little bell, you will get a notification every single time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can plan on a new video every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. Also, you can find me on Facebook at Arrested and Free. Uh, follow me there, send me a message, or you can send me a text or give me a call at 970-919-0459. Listen, I, I'm probably going to touch on this more again um, later on as far as understanding the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe. You guys, the born-again experience is the most powerful miracle that you will ever have, and it's the most life-changing miracle that anybody could ever have. I mean, think about it. Like even somebody who doesn't have an arm, but you have a, a, a creative miracle that an arm grows out. That's nothing compared to the fact that your names are written in heaven. That's, that's what we rejoice at. So I pray you have an awesome week, you guys, and thanks for tuning in again, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.